Colton looks real good right now. Um, we still got a lot of work to do, you know. It's our first time working together. Uh, so, you know, just like the knocking the rust off on double teams and stuff like that, making sure we're going the right way, you know, just like the little things rookies go through. But uh, physically, his development, his understand, understanding of uh, our play calling, the game, like our scheme, uh, He's way ahead of uh, where I would have been at this point in training camp my rookie year, so he's looking good. Uh, Brandon as well. Uh, they're just smart guys, you know. I wasn't that smart, so they look good. Uh, I think they have a really good chance. Uh, Miller tested 99th percentile at the Combine in the last three years. Uh, what can you say about his athleticism? Uh, he's real athletic, man. Um, just like his just pass set, uh, lateral movement and stuff like that. Uh, He's such a big dude, it takes you by surprise. Um, he's really athletic. I don't think that's uh, it's that's ever going to be a case uh, with him getting beat, uh, him just like somebody running around him or anything like that. With the, with a guy like that, it's going to be uh, him working on his anchor, you know, just being in the weight room and getting stronger and stuff like that. But as far as, like, uh, the framework of, you know, being an elite left tackle, he has the tools there. And I think it's really just up to us to – you know, get him where he needs to be. With the obvious strength of the interior offensive line, do you think drafting these two tackles is going to solidify your line as one of the top units in the league? Uh, are you talking about our defensive line? Or your offensive line. Uh, drafting? Drafting Miller and Parker. Oh, as far as like uh, solidifying, solidifying uh, our entire line? Solidifying spot around a great <clears throat> interior line. You know, honestly, I think it's just good competition in general. Uh, I think uh, as many good offensive linemen that you can have in one room, the better, because we all learn from each other. So. Um, yeah, I think that was a, a strong move by our team to kind of focus on uh, continuing to build on the strength of our team. So um, I'm really happy with what we're doing right now. Glad you, Tom, Tom Cable came here with kind of a reputation of being this zone blocking guy. He explained to us that maybe that's a little overblown. I can teach other techniques. Mm -hmm. I'm curious as to how much you guys are going to change with, with Tom as your line coach in terms of technique and the way that you block. Um, I don't think too much is going to change. I think he's a guy that's a stickler for detail, so that might change as far as him wanting to have verbiage as far as like where you're putting a foot or like you know an inside hand. He has like a lot of like verbiage and a lot of wordage and uh, goes stuff over and over and over again, which is a good thing. So I think it's like a, a mental task that's going to be more difficult. But he also is a smart guy and uh, he's obviously going to try to like stick with the strengths that we have. We have some big strong guys and <clears throat> we're going to be running like zone and stuff like that. But it's not going to be lateral. You know, he never wants to be lateral. Um, it's going to be. Uh, more downhill, you know. It's going to be more lateral than downhill. It's not going to be running from sideline to sideline. And that's something that he's been talking to us about. It's not like one of those things where you hear that, oh, like zone, we have these big guys, like they're going to be running side to side. They're not really good at that. Um, he's still going to allow us to attack people uh, based on how dudes are lined up. So He's kind of had this reputation of being kind of a place where the linemen really flocked to him every place he's been and kind of when he, when he, and he was a head coach here the linemen just loved him well, what have you noticed about him so far why does he have that he just has that type of personality where he kind of understands it you know what I mean you would have thought he played offensive line he's just like a tough guy and he has like that type of demeanor and he kind of um, appreciates a mean streak uh, and you know he, he appreciates like aggression and he likes seeing that and he likes getting after people so when you have an offensive line coach that um, you know, appreciates the pain that, you know, a lineman goes through and he understands it. Uh, you know, you just kind of respect it. It's a mutual respect, I would say. You, you guys go in pads uh, tomorrow as a lineman. How important is that to kind of ratchet things up? I'm sure it's physically daunting, but how important is it for you guys to put the pads on? I mean, honestly, I'm one of those people where it's like, I don't understand how you can practice without pads. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, it's football. So, uh, yeah, it's really important. It's like where you actually start getting that continuity on the offensive line where you're starting to get those double teams right and the timing right, like I was talking about. Um, that's when the real work actually begins uh, for us up front, just working on pad level and <clears throat> working on timing of, you know, your second step on double teams and just stuff like that, uh, the things, the nuances that uh, go with being an offensive lineman. So, I mean, that's when the work's going to really start. What similarities or differences have you noticed between Marshawn and Doug, and how is that going to impact the offense going forward? Yeah, I think it gives us like a dynamic where we have a guy that's like downhill and powerful and then we have a guy that's also powerful, but he's um, just like a quicker guy. He wants to like hit a hole, you know, he's going to pick a hole right away. 
um, and not necessarily just try to run people over all the time. I think Doug Martin is a, a strong and a tough guy, but he's also athletic and he has really good vision as a running back. So he's going to be able to change direction and hit holes and stuff like that. And then you're going to have Marshawn, this guy that's going to be able to like run in one direction, not necessarily have to cut back more than one time, not really going to try to juke anybody out of their shoes. He's going to try to get the yards right away. So I think it's good to have uh, those two different dynamics at play. Pads, pads obviously haven't been on yet, Kalechi, but how strange has it been this whole offseason to look across when the defense lines up and not see Khalil over there? Man, honestly, <clears throat> Khalil's a great player, and I understand that um, it's a situation where he's trying to take care of his family, and um, it's a business. We haven't really even spoken about it, to be honest with you. We're just, we've just been so focused on uh, getting better. And, uh, you know, I hope he comes back, you know, but that's outside of our control um, at this point. We're trying to be the best team that we could possibly be. And uh, honestly, uh, that name hasn't come up a lot, but I mean, we would love love for him to come back, but we're so into what we're doing right now that that's just what we're focused on. We're trying to be the best team possible. We're trying to win a Super Bowl this year. So that's really what we're focused on right now. Uh, who stepped up in Max absence? Huh? Who stepped up in Max absence for your defense at the VN division? Uh, really, it's just been Bruce. Uh, Bruce has been playing really well. Uh, 99. He's been flashing, but we don't have pads on right now. So it's like, it's hard to really tell right now, bro, to be honest uh, with you. It's Charity. like, huh? What about Charity? He's strong. He's got a good bull rush. Uh, he's a strong guy. But uh, yeah, man, we don't have pads on. It's way too early to really know. You had said a mini camp. And then Kibble was trying to strain your brain. I imagine it was a break. They wanted you to, he wanted you to come back prepared for the entire team. And how would you, what would you say he expected from people in the first day of camp? Um, camp <clears throat> well, um, after that first practice and after this, uh, this one that we just had, uh, he's proud at where everybody's at mentally as far as throwing the entire playbook at us and us picking it up and uh, us coming back in shape. So, uh, <clears throat> you know, when he comments on something, he usually doesn't do that too much. You know, he wants to, like, kind of, you know, mess with you a little bit. So if he's saying something positive like that, I think that's something that was really important to him. And uh, it's just going gonna, it's, it's gonna to keep... It's going to keep being a mental thing. He's concerned with uh, the mental aspect of the game. He's a guy that uh, he wants you to communicate really well on the line. He wants to be able to throw a whole bunch of code words at you and try to throw you off, mess with you so the game is easy. So um, I will say I've never had an entire offense installed in like one day and had like that many things thrown at you where it's like you don't even ease into it. But we did a really good job of handling it, especially the rookies. So I'm really, uh, I'm really happy with where we're at mentally as a football team.